This is the configuration in sacred geometry known as the circle squared. The circle in sacred geometry represents God, con pure consciousness, spirit, the infinite. The square represents matter, finite, the world of form, okay? In Da Vinci's most famous drawing, the Vitruvius Man, if you take the illustration out of the man, what you get is a circle and a square. But the center points are not joined. In sacred geometry, we begin to understand that everything resolves to unity. Everything resolves back to a center point. So a sacred geometrist, understanding this drawing, would always connect the center points into one point. When you do that, this is what he left encoded in the most famous drawing in Western civilization was the figure of the circle squared. In sacred geometry, this configuration makes the statement that God is in man, that he breathes into him, that spirit informs matter, that the infinite expresses through the finite. And Pythagoras believed that the reason that we exist in the world of limit, in the conscious world, is to access the infinite, is to access the superconscious. So this painting, which is my favorite configuration in all of sacred geometry, the circle squared, is that statement that there is no separation between the higher dimensions and the lower dimensions. And that again, in my studies of sacred geometry, is what is the most empowering for humankind. And I think that's the great mystery that has been sort of kept aside, guarded and protected throughout the time. So we're going to continue to another drawing. This drawing, which is also going to be a large, large painting, it's almost done. You see the circle squared here in the black? Okay, there is a practice from the ancient world that if you draw a circle just within the square, just within the square, okay, then you put a horizontal line across the middle. You join at the very top center of the circle, that makes a pyramid. Then at the very top of the circle, you take this radius, you draw a circle, and you drop a square. This drawing is the actual ratio, mathematically, of our Earth to our Moon, and the actual mathematical angle of the Great Pyramids at Giza. Mathematically, you translate proportions, it is exactly the proportion of our Earth in miles or metric to the Moon in miles or metric and the angle of the Great Pyramids. So there's tremendous... This drawing also sort of shows that sacred geometry exists through the universe, I mean, just through myriad of, of, of realities, you know. So that's also a really amazing drawing. This painting is an image of the Vesica Pisces. Uh, in sacred geometry, let me explain, we start in the great void of formlessness, where there is nothing in creation, but it is pure potentiality, exactly like the understanding of the quantum field in quantum physics today. It's exactly the same understanding. Pure light, pure energy, but nothing exists. In sacred geometry, the creator becomes aware of itself and exhales in a spherical fashion. So the first image in sacred geometry is a circle with just a dot in the middle. When creation begins, the creator decides, I want to move to that which is new. The, aware, the central awareness of God or consciousness moves to anywhere on the sphere, anywhere on the skin, the only thing in creation. It's the only limit in creation. He moves and then he exhales again. So you have two interlocking circles where the center point was the, the, the center eye of God. He moves anywhere to the edge, whoo, exhales again. Now this image is also the figure of the fish throughout time. It was the central figure for Christian mysticism during the Middle Ages. And if you turn it horizontally, you find the figure of Christ is often in this parabola, in this vesica 
painted in many, many churches throughout the Middle Ages and, and beyond. And in my lecture, I, I'm going to pull a lot of illustrations in that. The Vesica Pisces is also a representation of the first cell division after conception, not only of the human body, but of all life. So essentially, we all start as a vesica. We start initially as a single egg, which is, again, the single circle in sacred geometry, the first cell division, the first from unity into duality. That's the first step is the vesica. And you can find representations of this from microcosmic levels all the way to galaxies. And I will rep I'll show that in my lectures. So from microcosmic to, ma to human level to macrocosmic. Sacred geometry is the understanding. It's, it's the body of knowledge of universal archetypal proportions and ratios and templates that creation creates through. The creator creates microcosmic levels, molecular configurations, uh, the human body, the golden mean ratio is found many, many times in the human body itself, all the way up to macrocosmic levels of galaxies. So it's really, really fascinating. My job as an artist for my work is to make it more creative, but keep the essence. I, I love real uh, gold leaf and real copper. It adds a, a completely living dimension to the piece. And so that's why I, I use metallics, because I want that extra dimension. Because, again, these configurations are considered a, in sacred geometry as uh, geometries of higher light, of living energy, very high frequency. So with the gold or the copper, it adds another dimension, a living dimension, and that's what I want to sort of bring to the paintings. These things unfold progressively, one out of the other, so elegantly and so precisely, with so much mathematical, geometrical, philosophical, historical, symbolic meaning, that I just, it's like, okay, my job is just to make you gorgeous. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, anyway. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.